Thanks very much, Jenny, for coming down to our campsite to have a chat. Um, would you mind starting by introducing yourself and what it is you do, what the carbon farm is? Yeah, so my name's Jenny. I'm part of the Lancashire Peatlands Initiative, uh, which is run by the Wildlife Trust for Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside. And one of the really exciting projects that we've got going at the moment is the creation of a pioneering carbon farm on an area of lowland peat. And what does carbon farming mean? Is it harvesting carbon? So carbon farming is a really exciting concept and it really could be, you know, a big part of our future. Um, but what we are doing specifically with our carbon farm is we've taken an area of lowland peat that from about the 1970s up until last year had been drained and was used in an agricultural field. But what we've done is we are semi converting it back to a really happy functioning lowland raised peat bog, but in a way that could still be financially viable for the landowners um, of that area, but also in a more climate friendly way. Okay, so you mentioned just earlier a few statistics on peat, the main one being what is the impact of the drainage of, of peat bog? So peatlands are an absolutely amazing carbon store. Globally, they store one third of our soil carbon, yet they only cover about, between about three and five percent of the Earth's surface. Peatlands are wonderful when they are happy and they are healthy. They can literally sequester carbon from the atmosphere, which is literally just sucking it out of the atmosphere and squirrelling it away in their lovely peaty soils for millennia. But as soon as they are drained, damaged or degraded in any way, that carbon gets released, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, globally, emissions from degraded peatlands um, account for more than aviation and shipping combined, which is an absolutely terrifying fact when we know that if they were healthy, they could be literally helping us to fight climate change. So that's the kind of big negative scary but can it be turned around through carbon farming? Is that, that, is that what you're trying to prove, basically? Yeah, absolutely. Um, huge amounts of peatlands are used for agriculture, and so we're trying to find a way that that land can be managed in a really climate-friendly way. And the big thing you need to do is to re-wet that peat. Peatlands should be wet. They should be boggy. Um, and if you can get that water back onto those peatlands and then you can revegetate them with lovely classic peatland species such as sphagnum mosses, then these areas will stop emitting carbon and eventually you can return them to carbon sinks. So what we're doing with the carbon farm is taking an area of drained peatland, re-wetting it and then we've planted it up with a permanent cover crop of sphagnum moss. Now sphagnum mosses are basically the building blocks of peat. They are what forms the peat and they are what um, absorbs the carbon from the atmosphere. So we've got this wonderful area, it's wet, it's boggy again, it's covered in thousands of little plugs of sphagnum moss which are growing all the time um, and the idea is that this could be a way that could be funded through a mixture of public or private finance to um, look after the land in a way that's great for our climate, but that farmers could basically be paid for managing their land in a more climate friendly way. Whereabouts is the farm situated and what's the general landscape? What has it become? As I've understood it, it's kind of a lowland, what was lowland peat bog, but is now big flat areas of low grassland? Yeah, basically. Um, the carbon farm is situated just outside a little village called Wyn Marley in Lancashire. And um, it's a hugely agricultural area, masses and masses of fields that are all, uh, have all been hewn by draining peatland. What's really exciting about the carbon farm is that it's actually it's right next door to Wyn Marley Moss Triple SI, which is a wonderful area of remnant lowland raised peat bog. So the carbon farm is helping to keep the nature reserve wetter and the nature reserve is helping to keep the carbon farm wetter. It's a really good little relationship the two areas have got. But if you look around them, they are just a little island in a sea of drained peatland that's all being used for agriculture. So in essence, what you are hoping to prove, what you're proving on site is that whilst 
this drainage of peatlands for to turn them into agriculture has been a horrendous thing for climate change you can reverse it absolutely and it's not a particularly complex process no not really um peatlands want to be peat you know that, that's what they're there for um, and it's a really simple process what you need to do to restore a peatland and get it back to its wonderful carbon capturing um, potential is to get it wet again so and to get it the drain. vegetated. Yep. Stop the drains and you do that with just stomping peat bog in it. Yeah, yep. so a really amazing way of keeping water on a peatland is by building what are called buns. And these are just kind of little low walls. They normally only sit, you know, a metre above the ground um, of compacted peat. But that compacted peat goes right down under the ground. It can go a good couple of metres lower. So you just big, dig a big trench, fill it full of peat, stomp it down really, really, really hard and that stops the water from passing and it just keeps all the rainwater that peatlands need to keep them lovely and squelchy and boggy it keeps it in the right place once that area is wet then you can either introduce vegetation if there's nothing there to start with or you can let the bits of lovely peatland vegetation that would be there in the first place let them grow let them spread um, and at that point, once your peat is wet and once it has been vegetated, that's when carbon emissions will pretty much halt. And you can do that within a matter of a couple of years. It's not an incredibly long process, but it can make a huge difference and it can make it soon. And so this is basically planting sphagnum moss plants on top of what was kind of peat. Great. And how big a contribution do you think this could have to a UK climate solution? If it was, obviously you're on a small scale trial at the moment, but could it be scaled up? And could it be scaled up fast enough to have an impact in the next 10 years, for example? Um, I mean, it's really difficult to predict what's going to happen in the future. But if you look in our region of Lancashire, Manchester and North Merseyside alone, we have lost 98% of our lowland raised peat bog, which is huge. So every hectare, every little inch of peat that we can restore and stop emitting carbon is going to make a difference. With the carbon farm, we're, this is a pilot. Um, we're giving it a go because we know that there needs to be some other forms of land management for peat soils out there. So with the carbon farm, you can create these in, it's taken us under a year. Um, to, to see a marked difference from turning something into pretty degraded farmland to carbon sucking peat. Yeah, basically um, it took a few months to, to do the actual capital works, you know, to get the diggers on site and create the carbon farm itself. And within just a year or so, we're already seeing a reduction in carbon emissions on site, which we will expect to continue until eventually that point uh, the peatland starts to absorb carbon again. And you're, you're learning stuff on site obviously there's been things which you would do differently next time around but this is all part of what we've got to do just experiment um, not expect to be perfect straight off but what you're learning on site and the techniques you're using there's no reason that couldn't be applied to any degraded peatland in any part of the country. Yeah absolutely what we're doing with the carbon farm pilot is we're we're almost kind of giving it a go and we're making the mistakes so that other people don't have to. If they decide that it's something they're interested in, that they want to take up, we can say, well, you know, we put buns in, they were amazing. And we can say, well, actually, we had a bit more of a trouble with weeds than we thought we would. So if you were to create a carbon farm, you know, steam kill your weeds first. Um, and yeah, this could literally be applied to any area of lowland peat anywhere. It's pretty amazing, really. Um, you've talked about turning farmland into back into peat bog to replace some of the masses that we've lost. Some people will be asking whether that's going to actually impact our ability to feed the country because farmland, any space where we're feeding people is all critical. What would be your answer to that? Um, yeah, it's, it's a totally valid point. And basically, it's, it's all about balance. 
it's all about finding different ways to manage the land. So with our carbon farm, we've planted the permanent cover crop of sphagnum moss, but there's also um, a thing called paludiculture, which is basically wetter farming. So you could do something very similar to our carbon farm, you know, rewet your peatland, but then you could plant a crop on it that you could harvest. And that could actually even be sphagnum moss. You can harvest sphagnum moss and use it for growing media for compost. Currently, a lot of peatlands are dug up yeah. to create the bags of compost that you buy in the garden centre. But what you can do is you can harvest that sphagnum moss off the top and use that. Um, you can grow biofuels and we're also investigating different food crops that can be grown in a kind of wetter farming polluticulture way as well. You also mentioned that the farmland that you're turning back into peat is actually has been farmed for some years and it's actually not particularly productive anymore. Yeah, so some areas of peat can actually be quite difficult to farm. Um, the field that we have used to, to create the carbon farm was actually, it was really low fertility. It was requiring a lot of additional fertiliser, which is obviously an additional cost for the farmer and for the landowner. Um, it was very wet. It was, you know, underwater for six months of the year. Um, so, you know, it wasn't really particularly great farmland. So this is giving an alternative use for that that could actually end up being more financially viable. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. just about looking at each situation as it comes and finding the best solution for each situation. And there's an added bonus of peat in it being an incredible water filterer. Yeah. Um, Does that also apply in the area where your carbon farm is? Um, so basically peatlands are just these superhero habitats. They are amazing carbon sinks. They're fantastic um, habitats for loads of really rare, specialised and really fantastic wildlife. Um, but they also can provide us with natural flood mitigation measures. When a peatland is wet and boggy and healthy, it literally acts like a sponge and it absorbs rainfall. And then it releases it really slowly downstream. Um, however, when they're dry and they're degraded, all that rainfall just runs straight off the top, straight into the watercourses and can contribute to flooding. Um, they also can naturally filter our drinking water. About 70% of the UK drinking water supply comes from upland catchments that are dominated by peat. When that peat is healthy, the water is naturally filtered, meaning that there is less work that the water companies need to do, which makes uses less energy, makes it cheaper. It, it's a bit of a win-win. Unfortunately, when they're degraded, you might often see kind of rivers and streams and stuff that are, almost look like the colour of like weak tea or whiskey. We prefer whiskey. Um, <laughs> And that is carbon that has been dissolved into the water from these degraded peatlands, which are then, it's really expensive and difficult and energy heavy to remove. Um, so basically looking after peat is just brilliant. <laughs> and yeah. and when, they're, when they're happy and they're healthy, peatlands are just fabulous. So not just looking after it, but recreating peatlands could be a win on many levels, but particularly in terms of climate change mitigation. Yeah. Um, so given that, and given that first signs from the project look to be saying that actually you can repair these habitats and repair them quite quickly, and it would have a massive impact, what would be your message to the people at COP26, as that's where we're taking your stories? Um, yeah, protect our peatlands. They're really important. They're absolutely fantastic habitats and they could make a difference in our fight against the climate crisis. Simple as that, really. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me.